Hey guys, Mike Bills here with Measurable Solutions. I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to just talk to you today real quick about a concept that I've been I've been hearing a lot with different private practice owners that I talk to throughout the course of the country and really US and Canada. And it's really this concept of, that I'm going to call the invisible wall. And there's a lot of things that we do really well in our practices as practice owners, but there are things that we could be doing better at. And so this invisible wall, it's this wall that we keep running into that keeps us from being able to, number one, expand our practice if that's what we want to do, grow it to something that maybe we can sell or that we can pass on to somebody else. Or the invisible wall is something that keeps us, it's, it's that reason why as the owner, we have to keep being the one that's doing something or, or having our hands in everything all the time because this invisible wall keeps coming up. Our staff are good people, but this invisible wall keeps getting in the way. It's the invisible wall that during a time right now, like during COVID, that really gives us a hard time staying afloat. We're barely keeping our nose above water and then boom, the second wave of COVID comes by and you know who knows how that's gonna affect us. And without the PPP loan or, or an EIDL loan or whatever, how would we have made it through this first wave of COVID? So this invisible wall is this concept that keeps coming up. It's things like how do, how do things like no-shows and cancellations affect your practice? How do things like unauthorized visits affect your practice? How do things like a patient who comes in and says, you know, I just want to come once a week and your therapist agrees with that, how does that affect your practice? And so when you start putting all these things together, initially we're like, oh, that's not a big deal. It was just one visit that didn't get authorized. Or, you know, that doesn't happen all the time where a patient says, I just want to come one time a week. But before you know it, we've, it's happening one time a month or one time a week or one time a day or whatever it might be. And those things start adding up. And so it's that invisible wall that we keep running into that keeps us from being able to really advance our practice. And for more importantly, for us to be able to achieve the goal that we had for for our practice, whether it was that we wanted to back out of patient care, or that we wanted to help more people in the community, or that we wanted to have a good reputation, or that we wanted to make money and be able to donate to organizations in the community, or whatever it might be, we keep running into this invisible wall, and we, we just can't figure out why is it that I can't give up, get above 300 visits for the week, or why is it that um, you know that that every time we, we get the schedule full, two weeks later, boom, it's empty. Well, those are all the invisible wall things. Why is it that I don't always have all this extra money in my bank account that allows me to you know, take a month off and travel through Europe with my wife or whatever? Those are all the invisible wall things that we keep running into. And as we grow and as we add more staff, it isn't because we're adding more staff that we aren't getting the results we're looking for. It's because those staff aren't necessarily as skilled at handling those objections that we are as the owners, the guys that started this practice, we've been in practice for a period of time, we became very good at these skills without really realizing it. So using the example of the patient that comes in and says, you know, I think I'm feeling better, today's gonna be my last visit. How many of your staff would agree with that and be like, yeah, Joe, I, I think you've done a great job. I've really enjoyed working with you. Let's make today be your last visit. Or how many of them would take the opposite approach? You know, Joe, I appreciate the fact that you feel like things are getting better and that today could be your last visit, but let's check out how are you really doing with being able to go up and down stairs? And lo and behold, Joe can't go up and down a full flight of stairs and he's not ready for discharge, but your therapist doesn't know how to handle that. And so again, they take the approach of agreeing with it because they want the patient to like them, but that's an invisible wall that you keep running into because now Joe stopped coming to therapy four visits before he really should have. That's 20% of your volume that you just lost. You now have to go find another new patient for it. So you start putting all this attention and energy into finding new patients, when in reality, what you really needed was to just keep Joe for the four visits that he should have been here. Or the patient that comes in and says, you know, I can only afford coming once a week, so let's just take me off of every Thursday and I'll just come on Tuesdays. Well, all of a sudden, you just lost half of your visits off of that patient. And so again, you're out there having to get more new patients. You're out there trying to figure out, why can't I get my schedule to be full? Why, why does it seem that we're riding this roller coaster? Well, that's the invisible wall.